So while the sun's out, I'll take advantage of this beautiful day here in Melbourne and we'll put the Element Bolt up against the Garmin 820. We'll put them head to head, hopefully they play nice. I've got them set up exactly the same. So I've got my same weight, FTP, um, all the same sensors hooked up as well. And they're side by side, as you've seen there on the front of the bike. So we'll go for a loop. Uh, it's a modified version of Tour de Burbs, which will take in some bike paths, some overhanging trees, open roads, and quite a few hills as well. So I'm just about to hit go at the same time on both of these units. And then we'll get home and have a look at the data using Ray's analysis tool. It should give us some insight onto how well these things actually go head to head. All right, let's roll. So I'll stop the ride footage there. The conditions in Melbourne were brilliant and I don't want to make everyone too jealous. Okay, for me, the number one things for these GPS units are data accuracy, GPS accuracy, and just general ease of use. I won't go into navigation and best bike split and Dropbox integration and all that. For me, it's just the basic general use of the device. Does it do what we expect it to do? Let's look at the data that I've loaded here into DC Rainmaker's uh, analysis program. Starting off from the bottom first, you can see I've got two files here, the Garmin, Edge 820 up against the element bike. And you saw early on the configuration of those on the bike there. So let's scroll up and have a look at the data here. So they're both recording from the same peripherals, power meters, heart rate monitors, speed sensors. So what we'll do is we'll dive in here, have a look at the data, and there's absolutely no separation whatsoever. Well, you've got this little tiny, tiny little bits there, but when there is true separation of data channels, you can see a lot worse than that. But this is looking from my perspective and my experience of testing trainers indoors, outdoors, and multiple uh, Ant Plus devices and things, this is just brilliant. Okay, let's dive in here. Have a look, this is where I went for a comm attempt, about a minute long. So I really gave it the beans. And this is the data from both units itself. So you can see there's just a slight separation there, but we're talking very, very slight in the recording. Comes along fine. And all the way to the top of the hill there. Bit of a hill climb here. There's absolutely zero separation there at around 300 watts for about four or five minutes. On and off the pedals, it's looking good. And back near the end of the ride there, same again. Another 350 to 400 watt effort there. Spot on. So recording data, this looks good. Um, we'll skip over left, right data because it looks the same. Cadence, recording from the same. There's no drops there whatsoever. Heart rate data, this is how I line these two graphs up. Uh, the only difference I see there is how they record when they've stopped. You can see one will actually dip down and one will keep up. But again, that doesn't matter. We're not going anywhere at those po that point in time. So heart rate data is fine. Elevation data, now this one is interesting. Even where you position your head unit can affect your elevation readings because of the, uh, the barometric pressure readings. What we're seeing here early on, um, they're very, very, very close, very close, but they're not the same. And we see them all pretty safely aligned. Uh, that's the comm that I went for there. So straight up the hill, pretty hard around the corner. It re recorded that both up to the same uh, elevation. Where we do start seeing some separation though is sort of the second half of the ride. So here onwards, um, that's where I stopped at the service station, got a drink. And then, well, you can see, let's dive further into that. You can see here, they're recording exactly the same, I guess, loss and gain, but they're just offset a little bit. So nothing too much to worry about there, but we will look at the, the overall loss and gains in a sec. Mean maximal power, as to be expected, they're identical. So from the same power source, both units recorded straight on. So recording data wise, that's spot on. So we'll jump over to Garmin Connect now and have a look at some numbers these things actually recorded. Now I will confess I stuffed something up with this test. The ride sense wheel sensor on the back of the TCR was set to 2096 wheel circumference on the 820 because it's set within the head unit. On the element bolt, I couldn't find the actual wheel circumference setting in here. So I thought, oh, it's probably just going to default to that anyway. Yep, good one. It didn't default to that. I had to pull the mobile out halfway through the ride and bring myself back about 300 meters. So one unit had recorded 300 meters more. So the average speed and overall distance is out for the first half. For the second half, I both lapped them and they were spot on. So my stuff up there. So the Edge 820 tells us we burnt 819 calories. 
on the element. Oh, it tells us we burnt 941 calories. Now I don't know the magic that's going on behind the scenes with the calorie conversion, kcal, kilojoules, whatever these units are trying to do. That's out a little bit though. That's almost half a donut difference. Not quite sure what's going on there. Not only were the calories a little different, so was the TSS score. Now somebody's asked about this in the comment section of my other video. The TSS recorded on the Edge 820 was 83.9 and the TSS on the Element Bolt was 91.8. Now look, that's only a few butt clenches difference, I guess, in energy expel when tradies pull out on you, but it's still different. Now for now, I can't explain that one, but just an observation, they are different. As we saw before with the elevation graph, they were very, very close, but they were just a little bit different. We know why, it's a good estimate of how high you've ridden and the elevation gained and lost. Let's have a look at the numbers. So 428, meet elevation gain on the edge 820. The element bolt, 476. What's that, 45, 46 difference, nearly 50 meters difference over about 30 kilometers. Hmm, that is a bit different, something to be aware of. Again, if you're Everesting, if you're doing something based purely on your climbing, make sure you use a third party service to verify these. I've also disabled elevation corrections on these as well. So that is the number that's coming from both units. They were side by side and I angled them exactly the same. So they should have been right, but it depends where that sensor is underneath. Something to be aware of, you will get close estimates, but it still is an estimate, not a true actual measurement. So the two tick boxes so far, it records data really well and the elevation is close enough. That's the kind of variance we see across even Garmin units. So I'll accept that. Now, let's have a look at how smooth this thing is with recording GPS waypoints or the GPS track that it does. So now let's look at the two GPS tracks recorded by both units and we'll overlay them and see if uh, one has gone a little further than the other and how they track together. To be honest, it was a pretty good day here in Melbourne. And you can see here, even the, uh, the very sharp turns I'm making, that's pretty good. There's no real off segment sections. I'll zoom in here to the, uh, the KOM we went for. Fanged it around that corner, bit of an S bend there, and they track perfectly. One observation is under a bridge just here. You can see the Garmin in orange will actually lose satellites and it beeps and then it comes back. The element was a little bit more forgiving. A really good test of these things is to race around in circles on a crit track for a few hours and see if one spins off. Here's a picture of my race the other day over at Q and I went for two swims in that race according to my Garmin. But based on the data that I'm seeing there, I don't think we'll have any off segment issues if we're going for comms with live segments on. So thumbs up for the GPS accuracy as well. So in a case of really good timing, just as I pulled the camera out, Veronica calls me on the phone and I had the phone paired to both units. So you'll see the footage here of both units lighting up for a phone call. That was a nice little touch as well. So I know this was an outdoor road test. Last night I did some indoor road testing as well. I used the element bolt to control the kicker, setting the wattage range, just fine. Worked perfectly. Okay, a few common questions people have had about the bolt after seeing the initial media release. They're saying it looks like the same hardware as the element, just in a new form factor. Spot on, it's exactly what it is. The little bolt on the bottom of the mount that I couldn't figure out when I first unboxed this thing, that actually secures your head unit to your bike so you can't take it off. So for security, they're also saying for UCI, it's about having something connected to your bike, you can weigh it in and things like that. But it's a bit of a security device, that's kind of cool. The weight of the element bolt plus the mount is 87 grams as a whole package. And if you're worried about battery life whilst Everesting or riding across Australia or something like that, the bolt will work when it's under charge. And the final question I've got written down here is file system access. Under Windows, you plug it in, it becomes a mass media device, it'll install a few drivers and you can access the files. Under Mac, you'll actually have to use the Android file transfer utility. I'll put a link below. And I almost forgot the buttons on the front as well. They're uh, easy to press and you can hear them click. So they work really well. And I expect through a big thick glove, which we don't wear a lot of here in Australia, they'll work just fine as well. So there's my take on the initial road test, indoor test, and a few of the common questions that people have had about the unit. So we'll leave it there for today. That's ticking boxes so far for me. The data accuracy and the recording was really good. The GPS accuracy looks good, even under those bridges where the Garmin sort of couldn't really handle it. This thing came through with shining colors. We still need to go out and do a criterium or something really fast and with tight corners just to make sure it's not gonna get me in the river like my Garmin did the other day. Um, so overall, I'm loving it. The only gotcha that I will bring up at the moment is if I've got multiple power meters or multiple things of the same device, you can't select which one it'll use. It uses a proximity sensor, but sometimes in this room especially, that's not good enough. Given the speed of updates these guys are putting out, I'm sure that'll be a feature they'll add soon. I'm an edge case, but it'd be really nice to have.
So thanks for watching. I appreciate the views, the comments, the likes, and uh, let me know if you've gone and bought one of these or if it's on the cards. All right, we'll see you soon.